Old and On Air is sponsored in part by Green Mountain Support Services, empowering neighbors with disabilities to be at home in the community. Additional support for Able and On Air is sponsored in part by Washington County Mental Health Services, where hope and support come together. Welcome to this edition of Able and On Air, the one and only program that focuses on the needs, concerns, and achievements of the differently able. I've been your host, Lauren Seiler. On this edition, we will focus on Champlain Community Services to discuss the world of employment and other community services they provide. With us to discuss this important topic is, um, your name and speller, please? I am Elizabeth Seitler. Okay, and? Hi, I'm Michelle Paya. And you're the you're an employment counselor. Yeah, so I'm the director of the Way to Work program, mm -hmm. which we also have the School to Work program and the Bridge program under that umbrella. Okay. Explain the missions and goals of of Champlain Community Services. Yeah. So Champlain Community Services, um, our mission statement: we provide essential supports to people with intellectual disabilities and autism helping to create a place where everybody participates and everybody belongs. That's the mission statement, but really what we're doing is um, trying to build a, um, a broader community of support for people with intellectual disabilities and autism. And one of the most important ways that we do that is through our employment program. Yeah. Explain the process of people um, and employment within your program. Like, do they fill out? Um, an intake, how does that work, what kind of job do they want? Yeah, it's a pretty, pretty broad question. Yeah, um, so the Way to Work program, School to Work and Bridging, as I said, that's all under an umbrella of our employment programs. So Way to Work is our adult program, mm -hmm. so that's for individuals that are seeking to either change jobs, get a new job, um, be promoted in a job, learn new skills. But our programs are very much individualized. So the process for each individual is different. A person may come in with a resume already built and we go on to talking about references and, and industry of choices and where their skills and their talents lie. Or a person may coming in not even knowing what Vermont has to offer within, um, within an employment opportunity. Mm -hmm. So it's very much individualized. Mm -hmm. um, under the adult program, we have school to work, which is um, the same concept as supporting folks um, with um, different abilities to be able to go out and, and seek employment and understand what Vermont has to offer, what skills are needed in order to get into the competitive um, business community. Um, and we're working directly with the school systems within that. So um, we work with case managers and whatnot within schools on trying to identify um, what students are ready to be able to go into that phase of their, their life. Um, um, bridge program is one step underneath that, and that is a pre-vocational program helping students really to become more well-rounded um, in their um, in, in their lives. You know, the, the simple things of independent living, understanding um, what nutrition looks like and how to pack for lunch for work, um, to... Um, how to dress for a job. How to dress for success, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and all those things that we need for our bodies to be very healthy, to be able to go out there and really be our best selves when we're looking for employment. Mm -hmm. That also has a, a huge piece of the career exploration. Um, typically, um, you know, kids coming out of school or students coming out of schools are doing the, you know, working at Hannaford's and that type of stuff. This opens up a, a, a student's um, mind to the other opportunities that are out there, right. you know, larger and more, um, more, uh, more career-driven activities where a student can really learn the steps of employment and, and how to go about that. Okay, now, it's historically, um, there has been discrimination and people with special needs being discriminated against in the workplace. I know we have the ADA in place, mm -hmm. but in your opinion, and in terms of your opinion, this is a two-part question, um, in your opinion on discrimination in the workplace and how does your program combat discrimination within the workplace? Right. Yeah, I think discrimination and also inclusion is an attitude not necessarily a problem and we as an agency really promote um, dignity of all and pe treating people with respect and seeing that everybody has something to offer. Um, 
And I'm sorry, can I just interrupt? I think it's also, I agree with you um, that people more and more in Vermont are, are being able to experience working with people with different, different abilities. And there's, a, there's, there certainly still is discrimination, right? right? Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we, you know, we still find that. But I like the, the approaches that the more um, opportunities employers have to work with people with different needs. Example. The, exactly. Can but, you give an example? Oh, give an example. Well, I mean, many of our employers have never had somebody who has intellectual disability or um, experiences autism working with them. So it might be their first time. They might have a preconceived idea of mm -hmm. what it's like. They might be afraid, they might be intimidated. Um, and just just yep. getting to know somebody. You know, you, I'm sure you've heard the saying, um, knowing one person with autism is simply knowing one person with autism. They're, everybody is extremely And different. autism is one of those things, uh, well, I, I don't like saying things, but one of those situations where it's unexplained sometimes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, and okay. And people make assumptions. Mm -hmm. right. Now, here's another thing. Um, giving, um, What's the word I'm looking for? According to the ADA, like, for example, if you place someone on a, on a job or in a job experience, do you make sure that that person or that group of people is taken care of? What I mean by this is um, that it's an accessible place to work. Do you, like, go out to the job site and see to make sure that things are working properly mm -hmm, for absolutely. that person. Yeah. yeah, yeah. so our supports are, um, we not only support the individual, but we also uh, support the business community. So helping them to find qualified, eager individuals that want to work and do a good job. So with that, we're always building the partnership between the individual we're, we're supporting and also the business, and together we're a full team that really supports so the person and accomplishes. Suppose if, if you place somebody, let's say at a factory, um, um, place where they have to do like forklift mm -hmm. and that type of uh, job um, inventory and thing, yeah. and if you see it's too dangerous for them, do you place them somewhere else or do you find no, we do a lot of training because oh, it doesn't really? matter if you have a disability or not a disability. If, a, if an area is a dangerous area, it's about training and being aware of what the dangers are and building the knowledge and, you know, wherever, regardless of where an individual goes, they're going to encounter things that are unsafe. No, what I, what I mean is, what those. I mean, okay, in that case, since you said that, like if, if a person comes to you and says, okay, for example, if I was part of your program and I say, look, I don't want to work for them anymore. I feel that it's not a good place for me. Can you help me find someone else? Sure, if they're not happy with where they're working. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Or if That's there's problems, choice. or if, how do I deal with a boss that yells and screams a lot? Um, obviously, if you're going to work, because I have, I have coronary experience also. So if you, if you have a chef that yells at you but doesn't mean to yell at you, you know, yeah. how do you deal? with that. To educate the chef a little bit about yeah, uh, how to, how or to be respectful. If they're in a live truck, let's say journalism, and you hear yelling and screaming, it's not necessarily at that person. It's the nature of the job. Right. You know? So how how do you deal with yeah. those kinds of things? Um, and we we try to educate in every possible way we yeah. can and, and you know every moment that we can have the opportunity to educate we want to educate but we also want to be respectful of the individual and we want them to be in an environment where they're always going to find their best self if that continues to be an issue we obviously need to move on and find something that matches better mm -hmm. um, so they can be successful you know we all have to be in places that we're successful okay explain job coaching because I've been a job coach before. Mm -hmm. I've gone to uh, plenty of um, work sites and I've worked with individuals. What exactly, explain what a mentor is and a job coach or if they're one and the same. Mm -hmm. within your well, Generally a mentor is not paid, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. A job coach is. So a job uh, coach is? I've had paid mentorships. Okay. But 
Yeah, Go ahead. yeah. Um, so our job coaches are there to support individuals at their job sites to navigate um, and to really build on their success to give them, an, you know, just an extra opportunity, have a little bit more oversight mm -hmm. and training, or maybe um, to to acclimate themselves to the environment or to build those natural supports and find commonality in our coworkers. Mm -hmm. um, the the job coach can also provide transportation. Um, and and be a mentor, you know, to help um, model what success is at a, at a job site, yeah. mm -hmm. and really just to be there to um, help the individual navigate um, the employment process. Um, resumes, extremely important. Mm -hmm. um, do you help with resume workshops? How does that work within your? Yep, we do help with resumes. Classes or anything of that um, And I think we have to be very creative when we start thinking about resumes and, and building different opportunities for people to show their talents and skills in other ways. We're really looking into um, how we can do video resumes um, or audio That's resumes. That's interesting, yeah, you mean like... Um, paper like, resumes. So like a reel. Like, right, like right. Like what we're doing here. You right. Know. You know, paper doesn't always show the best qualities in everybody. So we really want to try to see how we can enhance that and help people to really see the abilities that somebody may have and the, and the, and the qualifications and that they can bring to the organizations. Mm -hmm. So we do resume um, building. Sometimes it's individualized and sometimes it's in a group. It's really dependent on the needs of the individuals that are seeking positions. The bridging program does some resume building yep. sort of classes. That, that's, yep. the, that's the high school um, bridging program. Mm -hmm. Do you guys help with, um, I don't know if it's a grant funded thing, but okay, let's say if a person wants to look nice for an interview, but cannot afford mm -hmm. a suit or tie. Do you guys help them with things like that? How does that work within your agency? We have in the past. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 So you have. And sometimes we'll use um, fundraising dollars that we have from the agency. We don't have any specific grant funding for that, but the the idea is to help people to get a job. And because I'll give you an example, New York and some other big cities. Like, um, I'm familiar. There's an organization called Dress for Success in mm -hmm. New York, and yep. if a person doesn't have a suit and needs one, they yeah. either have, you know, used clothing or they they find. A yeah. suit for that yeah. person. Yeah. Yeah. Thankfully, Vermont's a pretty casual place. Yeah. So you know, well, a lot of times I you mean, you never you know. Have you have to dress. You have to show up for an dress interview. Dress for the, exactly. For the right. Dress was, I mean, you know, I mean, if you're going to dress in a lifeguard, you don't come in a suit. Well, I don't, I don't know. But, hey. yeah. <laughs> Maybe you don't show up for your lifeguard interview in a bathing suit either. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, <coughs> uh, uh, all right. So. Um, what are some of the misconceptions around people with special needs when you first meet them? Oh my goodness. Wow. You know, I think a lot of the times is we see fear, mm -hmm. um, where individuals are unsure how to communicate, yeah. um, or unsure That's a huge of, a, one. yeah. yeah. People are people are afraid of I mean, people are afraid of people they don't know, right? And it, it's easy. We uh, um, often we put people in boxes, or we think of that sort of us and them thing. So a lot of times, people with um, disabilities are described as um, dangerous. Um, not they automatically them. think. Yeah. Uh, for example, yeah. if you're they, they if you're, you're mentally you're, challenged, they automatically right. think that you might, be, you might be harmful. Harmful. Yep. You know yep. that, um, that you that people aren't very smart. You talk about communication, that people can't communicate. Not only can they not understand things, but that they also can't express themselves. And they don't um, often believe that people with disabilities have different ways of communicating, like all of us, mm -hmm. you know, using um, body language, using um, verbal language, sign language, sometimes uh, facilitated communication. There's so many different ways that each one of us can communicate. And it's the same with people with disabilities. And I think sometimes there are assumptions about um, people with disabilities that um, they, don't, they don't have the same challenges that we do. Explain what do you mean by assumptions. Well, I mean, assumptions like um, that people with disabilities don't want to have uh, families, that they can't have partners you know, in relationships. I'm married. <laughs> exactly, exactly. There are a lot of assumptions that, um, and, and there's sort of, um, some people think that people with disabilities are childlike. And you know, that's one of the biggest assumptions that happens that 
you know, they're... Um, yeah, sometimes we act like children, well, but... Well, sometimes I act like a child. I mean, it's, you know, we're, we're all adults. And that's one of the biggest things that we try to make sure that employers and, and the community at large understand that people with disabilities are people like every one of us. They may have challenges, they can have issues with mental illness, they can have issues with substance use disorders, sexuality, all of the, um, all of the challenges that we see in our society uh, today, racism, sexism, all impact people with disabilities, mm -hmm. right? The same, the same as all of us. So, so there Where have been some of the placements that you guys have placed people? Oh, you don't have oh, to. Goodness. Oh my goodness. Okay, you don't have to say specific people or names. Mm -hmm. Just like corporations. How does? Oh yes. uh, How does um, the? How does the sector. corporations? Uh, you know. Yeah, we have pretty much um, helped support people find jobs in every sector of the business community, from manufacturing to um, computer um, development organizations, child um, care, child care, hospitals, hospitals. Um, you know, people are private business owners. Yes, we have entrepreneurs that we've supported um, to build their small micro businesses. Um, so you know, it's wherever the interest is, we seek. Mm -hmm. So. For example, if a person wants to learn, now obviously that person is not going to work for ABC right off or NBC, but if a person wants to learn or job shadow someone in journalism, yeah, what would be the first step that that person would have to go through? Yeah, so the um, first step would be exploring what their community connections are within that field of want. I was filled okay. with desire, right? To, yeah. to find out, okay, does my friend have a friend that works at ABC or does my mom work at ABC? Or really to find those networks within our community that can introduce us mm -hmm. and, and get our foot in the door That's to go That's one of the great things about Vermont yeah. is it's such a small, small state. 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 You're going to work in an affiliate station or you might work. Potentially, right. yeah. Yeah, right. or. And we always look at um, additional potential as well. You know, an individual may be an astronaut. Well, in Vermont, you're probably not going to find a, a lot job. Of astronauts in Vermont. You know, Know, doing that type of work. Maybe aeronautics or... But they're, right. So yeah. we look at all that additional potential. It's like, you, this is what, this is the industry that captures your heart and soul. So where do we go from there? What can we find that will give you that same feeling, mm. um, but in a different location? Okay. What has been your experience in the field of employment before um, Champlain? Community services. Okay, yeah. So um, my past adulthood was um, accounting and human resources. Mm -hmm. And then I came to Champlain Community Services and things changed quite a bit. Lucky to have you. What did I do before this? Yes. I, um, I worked on uh, wooden boats. I was, uh, I was doing trades work and I was oh, an artist. Interesting. Mm -hmm. And then, but I've been in the field of disabilities for 25 years now. Mm -hmm and still do a little art, sometimes do little trades, mostly, mm -hmm. mostly do this though. Um, now, Champlain Community Services, how long, how long has the agency been in fruition? So we just had, um, it's our 51st year right now. Our 50th anniversary was in 2017. Mm -hmm. uh, we had all kind, we had celebrations all year long. Um, Who started Champlain Community Services? Families. A group of families came together in 1967 and decided they wanted an alternative to Brandon Training School, where uh, people were going, and they... Can you um, explain a little, well, here, here's the thing. In terms of, in terms of employment, the downside to it, back in the 70s, they had something called sheltered that's workshops. How we, that's how we started. Right. So explain how, I don't, want to call it back to the future, but past, present, yeah. and future. What was, explain what a sheltered workshop was and then how you guys really came to be and why. Yeah, well we started, we, we started as a sheltered workshop. Um, and why did they call it sheltered? What was the reason behind? Well, I mean, it's, it's a, the name is what it was. It was a it was a workshop where people were sheltered from the community, um, and they they were really confined to that one area. It was a congregate work site, um, meaning everybody came together in that place and and mm -hmm. did the work. 
Um, what type of work would they be doing? Mm. Oh, Piecemeal things, work, yeah. really. I mean, so there would, you would have manufacturers often come to the organization and say, I need to have these bags put together, or I need to have these widgets assembled. So like Capital Candy? Like you, you, yep. put, you put stuff in the candy bag and you ship it off? Sounds just like it, yep. Similar yeah, to yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. And um, the people who were served or employed by CCS at that time, they would be paid by the piece. Hmm by how many things they were able to do. So you can see that if they um, weren't, didn't have a lot of dexterity and couldn't uh, move very fast, that their paycheck wouldn't be very high. So in other words, if they can only move slow and put together That's right. one product That's per right. day, th their checks would be what, six, seven so bucks? So we have- Oh, we not have, even that. Yeah, yeah, we have um, old checks from yeah, three yeah. or four dollars for a, a week's work. Yeah, work. yeah, yeah. yeah, it's not not fair. Not, not fair. fair. Not fair. We've come a long ways from them, you know. And there were the upsides to that were families were um, knew that the, at that time all that all families really cared about was that the people were work were safe. It wasn't so much about whether or not they were involved in the community. There was still that idea that the community didn't care about people with disabilities, and so they just really wanted that sheltered. Sheltered was um, worked two ways. It was sheltered from, from the community, right? And the community was also sheltered from the people in there. And I think for a long time, that was, that was so the So that's basically discrimination. It absolutely was discrimination, mm -hmm. yeah. But it was the first step toward what we're, what we're doing now, because that was better than Brandon Training School. That what was, was, that was considered uh, short and uh, short Answer. What, in the shortest possible way, what was Brandon Training School? So, p if people don't understand what that was, because I can, I can explain. In New York, in New York, we had something called Willowbrook mm -hmm. State School. Yeah. Where Geraldo Rivera. I saw, remember that. Uh, yeah. Saw yeah. disparities. Yeah. What was Brandon's training? So it was our statewide institution where people that um, any any person that the 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 state didn't feel comfortable being out in the community were sent there, and mm -hmm. so that was people with mental health issues, substance use disorders, um, and dis, uh, um, so it was disabilities. If you had, if if you were classified as um, I hate saying the word, but mentally retarded. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, that was when you weren't, you were sometimes sent somewhere. Yes, people yeah. were misdiagnosed a lot of the time. But and even uh, the state, uh, Brandon Training School was actually started by um, young women who were, who were indigent, maybe um, who had had children mm -hmm. out of wedlock, young. Um, they were put there because the community wasn't comfortable with that. It was really sort of like a place where people who didn't fit in the community somewhere else were sent and it was or a it was a training school. misfits quote yeah, quote for yeah. sure mm -hmm. um, and the training part was the the idea was um, that they could learn skills and they could do training but really what happened is as they as they did work um, the money came back to the training school it didn't come to the individuals so the next step was you can see it's a progression going to a sheltered workshop people were actually getting their own paycheck it just wasn't really valuable income. Mm -hmm. Now, etiquette, people with special needs, and etiquette on the job. Certain words obviously are not used anymore. Mm -hmm. The all word, you know, mental retardation is a diagnosis. It's not the person, per se, or retardation. It's a, because if you look up definitions of certain words, they don't mean what they say. You know, yeah. it's just a clinical. Now, my question is this. How do you train employers if they don't already know already? Do you guys do sensitivity training within how to treat someone with a disability the right way? How does that work within? That's one of the best questions. That's, yeah. yeah uh, am I asking the wrong question? No, you're asking a no. good question. And you know, I, I, I truly believe that employers are just respectful. Um, we do a lot of modeling. It's, it's, you know, we can train our community by how we deal with things ourselves. If we're treating an individual with respect and dignity and as a true, a true person, then everybody tends to just kind of gravitate towards that as well. Mm -hmm. We don't do sensitivity training at, at the job sites. We do normal 
how do we build commonality? How do we find where everybody is naturally um, tied together somehow? What is that? What does that look like? Right. Because mm -hmm. it's so person-centered. It's person exactly. by person. I wouldn't want to go into uh, an employer and say, this is how you work with someone with a disability. Every one of us ha should have an opportunity to, to be in a workplace and get to know people as we are, as a person. Right. Nobody went into my place of employment and said, here's how you work with someone like Beth. Mm -hmm. right? right? Like that's, for me, that's somewhat discriminatory. And I think, you know, the idea I'm, I'm is I'm that... I'm probably not asking the wrong question. Right. No, you're, I and, think and it's, no, a, it's, it's a great excellent question. question. It's a great because question. It, because it's an point, important point to be made that every person is individual. Every person is unique and every workplace has to kind of get used to the people who work there. And mm -hmm. we're all different. And there isn't, there isn't one way to teach a workplace, this is how you deal with people with disabilities. Because we're all so different. Right. Yeah. By doing those trainings, we're actually showing that this person may be different. And that's not what we're trying to highlight. We're yeah. trying to highlight how this person has come Or can the person go to the employer <clears throat> and say, look, because I, I know that on a job interview, you, you don't have to say you have a challenge. Mm -hmm. Right. You don't have to. But I tell, okay, I tell certain people, I say, look, this is what I'm dealing with. Mm -hmm. How can you make your, um, because I'll give an example. My job deals with computers. I'm dealing with um, scripting. I'm dealing with things. So to make my job easier, computers now, um, historically, they've changed. Because you can easily um, tap your screen and make it larger if you need to see. Yeah. Um, or at home, from time to time, I use, I have a home computer also, I use something called Zoom Text, which yeah. helps my visual impairment. Um, and I can, I can adapt it to me. So, um, so to answer, to, to add on to that too, another no. thing that we do um, is we do employment profiles yeah. where the individual then has the control of what they want the employer to know about them. Mm -hmm. But the, the employment profile is really designed to say, this is what I need. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I cannot articulate it, but this is about me, this is how I work, these are my skills, and this is the best way to communicate with me. And those have been very powerful at the job sites. Mm -hmm. Now. Adaptability. Um, let's say someone that wants a job tells the employer, look, because of my challenge, I can only work 20 hours a week or 25 hours, whatever that is. I can't work a full 40 hours. How do you work with that mm -hmm. within your agency um, as yeah. far as a, what a person can and cannot do because you know of certain challenges how does that work yeah every one of us has parameters around what we can do and what we can't do ex ex exactly um, and and we call that a lot of job curving where we'll talk with the employer and see what their needs are mm -hmm. and then we'll match them to a candidate that that best fits those needs you know employers also um, like to have individuals that are only working 20 hours a week because that's all the, the the job entails so it, it's that building of the relationship with the employee and the individual to right. find out what each what what the needs are, and and go from there. Mm -hmm. uh, future goals. We we have a little time left, but future goals of Champlain Community Services. A anything else you want to add? Oh my gosh, we're we are um, we're pretty ambitious agency. We always have something on the horizon that we want to do. We've expanded a little bit. We have some. Um, some new initiatives. We want to work with um, other agencies around job development, other uh, populations around job development, not just people, um, people with all different kinds of abilities who might have challenges to um, workplace employment, like um, maybe What are some of the projects that you work, if you, if you yeah. want to say some of that, what are some of the projects that you're working on now that you want us to? Yeah. So recently we started working with people uh, who were visually blind or visually impaired. Mm -hmm. um, that was kind of a new area for us to understand the complexities and the challenges in that population. We've looked at um, veterans groups, maybe um, new Americans or refugees mm -hmm. who are coming in, um, what the... Uh, immigrants. Im or immigrants, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, who are, you know, what their unique challenges are, trying to 
um, we're trying. We're really tr we're seeing ourselves more and more as not just a, um, a disabilities agency, but um, an organization who supports people getting to work. I mean, I think right. one of the things we we find is. Um, important to Vermont is getting people to work and one of the most natural ways for our community to come together is through the workplace. We all build natural relationships at work. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a, I don't like putting politics in the mix, uh, but as you know, a lot of things are being cut. You know, services have been cut sure. past yeah. and that type of thing and due to the administration that we're in. Um, <clears throat> If you were to give a message to Washington to say how important employment is for people with special needs and getting out in the workplace, what would you say? Well, one of the beautiful things about the work that we do is that it has such great rewards. And there's, um, I mean, there's good data. There's people going to going to work not only um, helps them financially, but it also helps to build, you would say, social capital, um, helps to build relationships, helps for overall health helps uh, reduce incarceration, helps reduce substance use reliance. What so do you mean by incarceration? Um, going to jail. Um, yeah. help, helps people, I mean, honestly, if we're engaged in work and doing well and building relationships, we tend to, people just tend to stay out of trouble a little bit. So there are all these incredibly um, data-supported uh, benefits of employment. So those kind of things, it gives us an opportunity to really um, show that. I mean, the, the political climate is always going to be in flux. There are... Um, you know, constantly, uh, you know, we should, frankly, we're, we use public dollars and we should be scrutinized for the work that we're doing. And mm -hmm. we feel really good about how we... Scrutinized how so? By looked at. I mean, if we, we're a Medicaid-funded agency, mm -hmm. um, those are public dollars. And I think it's, I think it's, um, I'm not surprised that people have questions about what those, what those dollars are going towards. Mm -hmm. And we're really proud of, of how they show up. And, and frankly, when things are tough politically, they're always tough politically, but when there's extra scrutiny on organizations like us, it just gives us an opportunity to show how good we're doing. Okay. Um, so knowing this um, uh, now, um, are people scared sometimes about hiring people with special needs? Why or why not? Not scared, but worried. Again, it goes back to the fear based of not understanding the disability um, mm -hmm. or how to communicate and how to work with this person. Mm -hmm. um, and also the fear of accommodations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and, right. and that's a total myth. Because you know, accommodations, accommodations don't really cost money to. No, no, they don't cost much at all. Um, and a lot of times they the accommodations the past, aren't related to any financial means. Mm -hmm. um, so, right. you know, it, it's about the education. It's going out there and educating um, the value of folks with disability um, and their, their ability to do, to do the job. Um, so, again, it, it all comes back to education and helping people understand that we're all different in our own ways. Yeah. And it's about getting a job done and having the right support. Anybody can work. And we try not to make people feel bad about their biases to begin with. I mean, because, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, the reality is people haven't had a lot of experience with people with disabilities. And the best way to sort of build that alliance with us is to give them opportunities to meet people and to not shame them for not understanding what they haven't experienced, but to, to say, listen, understand, maybe you haven't worked with somebody who's been different. That's unfortunate for you because you've, you've missed a great opportunity. And then that usually builds a... Um, you know, sometimes people are surprised or they have, you know, they, it gives them an opportunity to really look at their um, biases mm -hmm. themselves mm -hmm. and, and work on them. And our support is, is also there for the employer. You know, we're there for them. If they're unsure on how to communicate um, or they're unsure of how to deal with a certain issue that comes up, we're partners. We're there to help. We're there to help yeah. their whole organization to really build that strong diversity. Yeah. Okay. Well, I would like to thank you for joining me on this edition of Able Done On Air. Thanks for having us, Lawrence. Thank you. Yeah. It was a pleasure. No problem. Um, for more information on Champlain Community Services, where can they turn? Our website is ccs-vt.org.
And if you could just, you can just search Champlain Community Services too. Okay, is there a phone number that they can reach? Our main number is 802-655-0511. Can you repeat it one more time? 802-655-0511. Okay, well that puts an end to this edition of Able Lit On Air. I'm Lauren Seiler, Arlene is off today, but um, we'll, uh, we'll return next week. And we'll, uh, we will return with a, another exciting episode of Able Dead On Air. I'm Lauren Seiler. Again, we are sp uh, sponsored in part by uh, Green Mountain Support Services. Thank you, and um, see you next time. Ableton on Air is sponsored in part by Green Mountain Support Services, empowering neighbors with disabilities to be at home in the community. Additional support for Ableton on Air is sponsored in part by Washington County Mental Health Services, where hope and support come together.